Yeah, I was going to start with browsers, but let's start with email. Right, browsers. I think, oh, it, does, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, <laughs> let's start browsers. Okay, so I, I think your favorite is Chrome. Is that right? <laughs> Get out of here. I'm leaving. I am done. Um, so Chrome is one of the absolute worst offenders when it comes to privacy breaches. Yeah. Um, Edge is actually really bad too uh, yeah. when you're browsing and um, using Edge. Um, and so this is, first of all, let's differentiate between search engines and browsers. Browsers are like the little you know, apps that you open that yeah. are helping, you know, absolutely actually populate this. Because I get a lot of comments when I'm I'm talking about these things and I'll be like, here are some good browsers. And people say, what about search engine X? And I'm like, yeah. no, no, they're different. So, um, so for browsers, I love Brave. And here's the reason why I love Brave. I also use you Brave. know those tracking, yeah. Sorry, yeah you know those tracking links that you get like everywhere. For example, yeah. if you if you go to Twitter, and you're sharing a link. You can copy it from the URL. Looks like a normal tweet. As soon as you hit that share this tweet or copy link to tweet, if you look at what you're actually given, it has like, well, here's your your uh, URL, and then there's a slash and a question mark and like a billion digits that come yeah. after that. And so anyone that you now share that link with, they'll be immediately tracked back to you. They'll be linked to you. So tracking links are everywhere. Tracking links are also when you you know you click on a, a, a page and suddenly you look at the bottom left hand corner and all these little websites pop up like before it takes you to the page and like what, yeah. what's happening there? Yeah. It's all it's called bounce tracking where they're bouncing you through trackers, right? There are all of these ways that we're tracked and Brave does an incredible job with blocking those. Not only do they immediately strip out any identifiers from the URL itself that they know to be tracking identifiers, but they'll also do things like debouncing. Debouncing is where instead of bouncing you through like all of these different sites, the browser will learn, well, usually when we when the person starts from here, a bunch of suspect things happen and they end up here. Let's learn over time that they always end up here and let's just bounce them directly That's there good. and cut out all these trackers. The other thing they do is unlinkable bouncing. So sometimes they can't figure out where the ultimate destination is, but they'll go, okay, well, at least if you have to be bounced through all these tracking links before you get to your destination, let's have the user visit them in this throwaway container. That means that, you know, no profile can be built up over time about this person because this container is only used once. You go to this tracker, it's thrown away. You go to the next tracker, it's thrown away. You go to the next. So they're not learning anything about you by being bounced through these trackers. So they do tools like this. They're the most aggressive uh, and that's browser. That's default. For sorry, default. I just wanted to ask you, sorry, that's done by default. Is that right? That is. And a lot of people, they'll say, well, Firefox is great too. And yeah. Firefox is great. Uh, Firefox is great if you're someone who likes to tinker. If you like to download your own plugins, there are some great plugins, like different Facebook containers available for Firefox. I always direct people directly to Brave because first of all, everything, as you said, it comes default in the browser. So out of the box, I think it's the best privacy preserving browser, but also they just do a tremendous amount of great work, um, you know, pushing the envelope when it comes to uh, aggressively pursuing privacy for their users. So no other browser that I uh, that I know of actually create tracking rules to help people uh, you know, fight off tracking links that specifically target companies. And what I mean by that is that most browsers will create rules that are universal and they'll say, well, here's a rule to stop this type of tracking link and all this. Brave says, no, we know that Facebook in particular tracks people like this. We wouldn't yeah. put a normal company in this box, but we will do it to Facebook because we know that they're doing malicious things to their users. We know that Google tracks people specifically like this. When another company does this, it's it's okay, but we know that Google does this to track people. We're going to put them in a box. So the fact that they go out of their way to actually name the bad players and create rules that target them, I think speaks a lot about yeah. them. Uh, I, I, I like that about them. Um, so they're another tool. I would say like, even Safari is a privacy preserving browser, but if you're really interested in privacy, I wouldn't 
choose Safari as my browser because um, Apple does you know, send a yeah. lot of information back uh, about you. But I will say that Apple does do work for people who aren't privacy focused and Apple's helping them regardless. <laughs> so Apple is doing things to help the average person who's not going to actively seek privacy tools. If you are someone who actively seeks privacy tools, I would probably go with Brave or Firefox if you wanted to tinker some more. So let's, I wanted, I, I just had an idea. How about like Naomi's like out of 10, how would you rate? So, I mean, let's play a game. Chrome, is that zero out of 10, where 10 is great oh, and zero is bad? Yeah, Chrome's terrible. They don't, they, I think they're the only browser, um, large browser that doesn't block third party cookies now. And they keep oh, saying, wow. oh, we're going to do it. And then they keep pushing it back and pushing it back. They, Chrome is so bad for your privacy. It's atrocious. So then, I mean, yeah, I zero. just, zero, yeah. Uh, edge? I, I listen. I we're gonna get if we're getting that granular. I don't know whether we should do a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, in let's that do case. a thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, okay, Edge. also rubbish. Yeah, Safari maybe, maybe Safari like halfway. Safari's pretty good, but like go for something better. And then uh, Firefox maybe if you can tinker. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you want to tinker. And then Brave is your is your best. Yeah. Yeah, and there are other smaller ones. There are things like Vivaldi, that's a browser that I sometimes use. The problem, like, I mean, there's Opera. The problem with some of the smaller browsers is that you need to have website compatibility. And sometimes yeah. when you're building a website, you're just going to say, okay, like 80, Google has 80% of the market share. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure it's compatible for Google. And then maybe I'll add Firefox and Brave and maybe Safari. But as you start to get to the smaller ones, they don't often check that it's compatible with a lot of these smaller ones. I haven't had too many issues like that, but that is something to keep in mind if you are using a smaller one. It's not a reason to not use them completely. I actually really like some of these other browsers. Uh, it's just something to to keep in mind.